I was a producer of theater and music, and then I got interested in museum work, and I learned how to be a curator, and I built cur uh, museums, and I built cultural centers, um, and I worked all over the U.S. Um, I wasn't really afraid to try new things or take risks because uh, I was passionate and I wasn't afraid to work hard, I mean like 100 hour weeks hard uh, at times in my life because I felt really passionate about something that I was doing like building a cultural center and opening it. And none of this was really given to me, it was done because I really wanted to do it and I let people know, and I just picked up the skills as I went along. And if I didn't know how to do it, then I sort of looked around and found somebody who could teach me, uh -huh. or I read a book, or I took a course. I just taught myself a lot of what I, of what I know. I, I got a master's degree, a master's of fine arts in theater uh, in, uh, in San Diego. Um, and over my lifetime, I've built about nine different cultural facilities, museums, theaters, and cultural centers. And that's why they hired me here at the Parks Department, because I not only knew a lot about theater and knew a lot about museums, I also knew how to build buildings. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do a lot for the Parks Department, is build buildings. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised how Great. many of... Great, you how, how different uh, skills you might have in uh, a skill in environmental science, but you have a liking for technology or going online and creating things online, and you end up combining them and creating something new, and that's what makes your mark. That's what makes people notice and say, give that guy a job. We need him now, you know. I was just going to ask you, Laura, if there's ever been a time in your life when um, you couldn't get paid to do what you were passionate about, and if you came across a time in your life that was like that, how did you continue to pursue your passion and develop your skills? Um, well, when I uh, was in um, my early 20s, and I was looking around, I had to take, you know, I was a waitress. Uh, I was a dishwasher at times in my early 20s to put myself through school. Um, I had to pull down three jobs um, at a time to get through college because uh, I had to put myself through. My parents were wealthy and so they said, you know, you, fine, you can go to college, but you have to pay for it yourself. And so there were many times that I really wanted to do what I wanted to do, but I had to have a a job that gave me a meager living, you know. Um, but I found an internship, and so in what I was really passionate about. And so I worked at this one internship for two years. They actually called it my internment, internment <laughs> which means to be buried, because I really allowed myself to be in enslaved <laughs> to this organization, this multicultural theater that I really believed in while I had a full-time job working at the library. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, they said, at the end of my internship, we're going to write you a letter of recommendation to graduate school, and we're going to give you $2,000 to go to graduate school. And I got, as a result, got a scholarship uh, to go um, to graduate school, which was like the point at which I could mm -hmm. take off. And so there were lots of moments where I questioned <laughs> the wisdom of what I was doing for free for all these years, but it paid off. And actually the contacts that I made in doing that internship have lasted me my entire life. And ultimately, it's not only your passion that builds your career, it's the people you meet. Like everybody here, you're probably going to know them for the rest of your life. And as they go on their career path, and you see what they're accomplishing, they're going to give you a hand up or give you a tip about a job or a way to pursue your passion. Um, and it's really good to keep in contact with everybody you meet in Austin because they're going to go someplace, and so are you. Uh, 
you're going to want to know them for the rest of your life. And so that's, I mean, that was one thing. Uh, and then what I learned over my lifetime is that uh, you're always interested in something new. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm passionate about gardening, organic <laughs> gardening. Mm -hmm. And so even though I have a job where I have to work, you know, 60 hours a week sometimes, I always find time on Saturdays to go to the natural gardener and take class <laughs> and watch TV and take notes and pick up some books and sort of figure out how I can be a better organic gardener. Very so learning is a lifetime. And you know, I suppose that part of that might come back to you when you're dealing with Nature and Science Center or Absolutely. You know, other facets of your career, too. I'm right? in charge of the Zilker Botanical Gardens, uh -huh. and as we're trying to reshape the Zilker Botanical Gardens, I think about other people like me, who live in the city, who want to learn more about organic gardening and how can we create better educational opportunities for kids and adults using the thing I'm passionate about right now, yeah. which is gardening. And the thing about it is, don't ever put yourself in a box. Don't ever think that, one, you can't do something. That's just absolutely ridiculous. You can do anything you want. You have, really, every opportunity um, in the world in this country. It's a, a tremendous, it's, it's a, a society that is, is giving us an opportunity to exceed and we're dumb not to just reach for it all and, and go as far as we can go. But also, um, the uh, never think that you can only do one thing because uh, you can pursue your, your passion for environmental science and be in a band. And sometimes they connect. It's funny how sometimes when you have different interests and you decide to go at two of them at the same time, they have a way of coming together. It's and like what you were talking about earlier, about the people who have great expertise in one field and then of a seemingly divergent field. Those are the people who have the most innovative, innovative ideas that move us the farthest forward, right? Mm -hmm. Because right. there are two parallel situations and they can see it. They're in the unique position to be able to move right. it forward, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and the things that you do now... I don't know you, but I expect that you have friends who are also your age and who are pursuing hobbies or interests that are like they're interested in. Well, that actually is what the world is interested in. Uh, it's it's uh, you have to think about the fact that you know if you're interested in Facebook right now and connecting with people and having that community uh, going on on uh, through Facebook. Well, that's a thing. That's a thing that you can capitalize on, that you can market, or that you can think about and develop into, well, what if, you know, what if a model like that was invented just for environmental science or for the Austin Youth Riverwatch, you know? You just take off with an idea that's popular, and you, you come up with the next popular idea. 